It's Wednesday, July 9, 2014, and this is the Product Mentor Talk. Today we're joined by one of our mentors, Dominic Gowdry, uh, Director of Product Management at AEP, and he's going to lead us in a talk today on active competitive intelligence. Um, so let me just tell you a little bit about how this format works for those of us who might be joining us for the first time. Um, the way the Product Mentor Talk works um, is that you're joined by mentors and mentees that you see here in the room with us today. Uh, part of the ProductMentor.com's uh, program of helping product uh, people uh, move up and uh, improve in their skills and career. Um, and then the rest of you joining us through the ProductMentor.com slash live um, can also ask questions. You'll see there's a Google moderator page. As you ask questions and as we ask questions, we basically progress the conversation forward uh, as Dominic uh, uh, presents and talks about active and competitive intelligence today. Um, so definitely uh, keep the post the questions to Google Moderator, and as they come in, I'll be interrupting Dominic and uh, getting you your answers right away. Um, so uh, with that said, we're going to kind of just uh, quick do some quick going around introductions. Um, so let me start with Dominic. So hey everybody, uh, thanks Jeremy, Dominic Adori. I um, work at ADP. I'll tell you a little bit more about me in just a moment. Um, but yeah, it's great to be here. Excellent. And Lynn. Hello, I'm Lynn Stabile. I'm an associate product manager at um, Planned Parenthood in New York City, and I am a mentee in the Jeremy's Mentorship Program. Excellent. I see Christina just joined, but I can't see much more than that. So I'm just going to keep going with the rest. And I'm Jeremy Horn. I'm also AKA the product guy. I also run the product group. Um, and uh, if you're interested in being a mentor or mentee uh, in the program, definitely come check us out at theproductmentor.com. You can be, you know, maybe someday as cool as Dominic um, and doing all this great stuff. Um, but with all that said, we're going to just dive right into it. And again, please uh, be submitting your questions to the Google Moderator channel, and I'll be keeping an eye on that and passing them on to everyone else. Um, and there we go. Dominic. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks again, Jeremy. Let me go ahead and start. Uh, so again, as Jeremy said, we're uh, going to be talking about uh, active competitive intelligence. I'll tell you a little bit more about that term in just a moment. Um, and as so far as the agenda goes, uh, I'll give you a, just a brief introduction about myself. Uh, we'll talk about what is competitive intelligence, who typically does it, why do we do it, uh, and then probably a good chunk of our time together will be to talk about how do we do it, what are some of the tips and tricks uh, around uh, attaining information about our competitors and our market trends and so forth. And then finally, um, I'll spend some time talking about how do we use it because we can gather all this information, but uh, unless we have some sort of methodology for utilizing that information, it's kind of pointless and, and uh, doesn't do us a whole lot of good as product managers. Just a quick bit about me. Uh, I've been with ADP in the product man management organization for 14 years. I'm a director of product management at the ADP Innovation Lab in Chelsea in uh, downtown New York City. Uh, my uh, sort of specialization is around data insights, which is really uh, reporting and analytics, um, as well as social graph business value. So using social graph information, um, particularly in the workplace and how individuals interact with each other um, and how that brings value to a company. Uh, for those of you who don't know what ADP is or have not heard of it before, um, you probably have, you just don't know it. ADP uh, currently uh, pays uh, through our payroll services about one out of every six paychecks in the United States. Uh, we move about $1.2 trillion a year through our business and we uh, submit um, 52 million W-2s through our services every year as well. And there's my Twitter handle, if anybody is on Twitter. Um, a little bit about you. Uh, so as Jerry mentioned, this is the product mentor um, uh, group. Um, and uh, some of the presentations that have happened so far is uh, Asha covered product principles a few months ago. Uh, a month later, Andrew helped us determine how features are prioritized. And we're going to talk a little bit about that tonight as well. Matt talked about uh, with us uh, continuous product delivery and getting products available in a leaner, meaner way. Uh, and then last month, Cindy talked about creating a community for the future product we are looking to deliver. So tonight, we're talking about competitive intelligence. So what is it? So 
pretty standard definition here. Competitive intelligence is a systematic program for gathering and analyzing information about your competitors' activities and general market trends to further your own com company's goals. The key here is that the goal of competitive is intelligence is to develop a strategy to be more profitable and successful as a company. Uh, and very specifically, for you as a product manager to be able to use that information and to make changes to your strategy as a product owner um, to move your product forward. And as far as the methodology, it really involves finding publicly available data and knowledge about our competitors, strategy, capabilities, products, and markets, and then analyzing them and turning them into actionable intelligence. And that's really why this, the title of this presentation is Active Competitive Intelligence, because uh, once again, it really doesn't do us a whole lot of good unless we do something with that information. As far as who does it, you know, it really depends on the company, um, and depends in large part on the size of the company. So, if, uh, if you've got your PowerPoint up, we're not seeing it right now. Oh, really? Sorry. Uh, let me. Did you see it at all, Jeremy? No, we've been looking at you. <laughs> right. Now we're, now we're good. Are we good now? Okay. Wait. Nope. You're back again. See, I put it in full screen. Okay. Um, hmm. I don't know what's different now. You see it now? Sorry about that, guys. Give me one second. Try something. Yeah, I put it in. I put it in play mode, and it goes. De it drops off. I don't know why it's different now, but. Um, hmm. If you could, uh, if you have a PDF and you could just kind of go over to like a P just a PDF window of it, I think that would be yeah. as well. It's a it's a good hack for uh, some of the challenges we face with Google Hangouts from time to time. <laughs> One second, do that no quickly. Problem. By the way, it was going great without the slides. We were doing fine. <laughs> So, open that guy up. And. Well, for those of you who didn't see the slides, they were great. Yep, we see it. You see it now? Okay. Good to go. There's our agenda. That's me. That's you. That's the what is it. Okay, so we were here. So um, as far as who does it, it really depends on the size of your company um, in large part, but it, you know, it really depends on your company culture as well. Um, so uh, I've seen often in very large companies there is a specific group that actually is the corporate competitive intelligence group, um, and all they do is co competitive intelligence. They put their information up on a portal, and then uh, product managers will share that it will uh, share in the proceeds of that information gathering that's done by that group. Um, I've seen it where some companies have their product marketing group do it, um, where they really kind of go out and do that kind of research, and then they share it again with product management organization. And then I've seen it where product managers just do it themselves, um, and they spend a certain amount of time um, doing uh, doing the research. Um, in my view, uh, from a RACI perspective, so for those of you who don't know what RACI is, RACI is like responsibility, accountable, consultative, informed. In my view, every product manager and product owner is the R. You are responsible as a product manager to really understand your market and to really understand where you sit and your product sits within the uh, competitive landscape. Um, and so uh, regardless of who does the legwork and who's really doing the research component, um, it's really important for you as a product manager and for me as well to really understand uh, your, uh, your competitors. As far as why we do it, um, this really comes down to four kind of primary things. The first one is to determine how the product's features compare to competing products. 
Um, you do this in order to select and prioritize features to add to the product so it will sell better against the competition. So you're really trying to understand what is it um, that my competitor is doing so that I can perhaps make adjustments to the features and functionality that I am prioritizing as a product manager. Secondly, it's to include major functional areas that the market, uh, so like competitors, thought leaders, customers, is defining as appealing extensions to the current product set. So some examples of that might be, and these are very genetic, generic examples, but like Amazon adding the capability way back when on, of customer reviews, and then everybody started going, ooh, I can sell more product if I have this feature called customer reviews. Um, where people are more apt to have confidence in this particular product uh, and will more likely buy it. Netflix is another good example. They built this really awesome algorithm that basically says, hey, we know who you are, we know where you live, we know uh, what your age is, we know what movies you've watched, so we know, generally speaking, what kinds of movies you might be interested in. Um, so again, it's, it's keeping up on not just the core product, uh, so in the case of Netflix, the streaming movies and, and, and movie rentals, but also the extensions beyond that. And then when the competition makes a move, your company is ready to counter them effectively. So it's really keeping track of how your competitors are making changes and then your ability to kind of maneuver around that um, and also keep your sales force up to date on, on what's happening. And then finally, I think it's important as a product owner to be the SME or the subject matter expert around your product, the product space, the value proposition, unique strengths and differentiators. Essentially, you're the evangelist. You're the ambassador for your product. And in order for you to help the field sell it, you really need to understand what they're coming across, what kinds of competitors are getting into their uh, way of making and closing deals and selling uh, whatever solution it is that you're uh, the product owner for. So that is uh, why we do it. So what is it? Um, it really comes down to sort of four big components. And I'm not going to go into the details of every one of these, but I'm going to go into some of them. Um, I will tell you, first of all, that as a product manager myself, um, I probably spend somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 to 15% of my sort of workload time doing competitive intelligence and or reading about competitive intelligence information that comes across my uh, email or desk or whatever the case may be. Um, and then I use that and kind of incorporate that in the decisions and in the um, in the work that I'm doing. So um, what are the components? Well, competitive intelligence includes the things like growth strategy, capabilities, target market, SWOT analysis, sales strategy. It also includes product intelligence, like what are my competitors doing in terms of features, value propositions, messaging, collateral, pricing, release cadence, uh, new patents, um, all of those kinds of things. It's also market intelligence. You really want to understand not, not just what your competitor, direct competitors are doing um, in terms of the companies that you're competing against, but also what's happening in the marketplace, especially with adjacencies. So you have things like uh, what kinds of things are trending, how is technology changing things, in just in general, uh, what kind of thought leadership is happening, uh, what are the regulations that are happening that may affect um, the market that you're working in or you're selling against. Um, and then finally, customer intelligence. This is really understanding your end users, business goals and their needs, their pain points. And then uh, one of the big areas is around win-loss analysis, really understanding why are customers coming to your company and buying your product and why are they leaving. Um, and I think that's an, uh, those are some important components as well. So those are kind of the high levels, uh, high level kind of buckets. And I'll go into some of the details of these. Um, I decided to only go into the areas that I actually have some personal experience with. To be honest, even 14 years as a product owner, I, I haven't done everything. Um, there's a lot that you could do um, that I haven't done for a variety of reasons. Um, but I'll share with you my own personal experience and uh, hopefully we'll have some conversation and questions through this that will kind of lead to others. Uh, one thing I did want to spend a little bit uh, real quick time on is around ethics um, and I want to so sort of start by saying uh, the ethics thing is really a company culture decision. So every company has their own policies around what ethics uh, should be followed as it relates to competitive intelligence. So I'm going to share with you my own personal set of ethics around this. Um, and they have definitely evolved over time. Um, but 
these are just the ones that I follow. Your company and your culture and your experience may have a different set of directions and ethics. Um, the general rule of thumb for me is that if it's publicly available information, then it's fair game. So if it's out on the internet, if it's something that you can easily access, then it's fair game for you to, uh, to utilize and to essentially uh, incorporate into your sort of library of information. If you get material from someone else, it's probably a good idea to ask where they got it from and if it's okay for you to use it. So just as an example, let's say somebody from your competitor starts working for your company now, let's say a salesperson, and they have information about the roadmap of your competitor and they come across, a, they have a roadmap document that they happen to have on hand and they pass it to you as a product manager as now their company. Um, it's probably not a good idea to use that information. In fact, I wouldn't use that information um, only because it was passed to them with a certain understanding. Even if there's not a, a non-disclosure agreement in place, it's probably not a good idea to use that. Also, one of the one of the interesting things that uh, tends to happen is you can go to the internet, you can go to your competitor's website and say, "Hey, um, I want to." I want to download this white paper or I want to uh, see a demo of my competitor's solution. Um, I personally will never, I will always use my business persona, my work persona. So I will not use my personal email address and make up some name or anything like that. I will always divulge who I am and what company I work for and what capacity I work for that company. Um, in some industries, they will block you and they will say, no, you can't get this white paper, you can't see this demo. In my industry in particular, I actually have not come across a lot of blocking. Uh, so I've been able to see demos of competitors directly by just putting in my information. There's no kind of check as far as who's coming in and so forth. Now they may look at it later and go, ah, they came in and they took a look at this. Um, but uh, as long as you're providing full disclosure and you're saying who you are, I think you're, you're good to go. And then of course switching company is always a consideration as I mentioned earlier which is basically if you have information about your product roadmap for your current company and then you move to another company, um, it's really one of those ethical dilemmas that you have to work through in terms of what you should or shouldn't be uh, passing on to others. So that's just a little bit. Uh, about the well, I just want to jump in there. Uh, I have a question. I want to hand it off to Lynn. She had a quick question about something you had said a little bit earlier. Okay, sure. Hey, Dominic. Um, I just was wondering if you could repeat about how much of your time do you spend doing putting this intelligence together? So I personally, in terms of research and in terms of putting, in, in terms of putting this stuff into practice, I probably it's, we can't see you. You might want to toggle off your full screen. Uh, sorry about that. Here we go. So I personally spend about 10 to 15 percent of my time um, either doing the research itself or, um, or, uh, or kind of integrating the information that's coming across my desk into the work that I'm doing. Um, I will tell you though that that's 10 to 15 percent of my time in terms of during work hours. I, it is invariable that I will bring some sort of journal or magazine or information that ends up being competitive intelligence. Uh, on vacation, uh, at the beach, you know, those kinds of things. Um, but yeah, I probably spend 10 to 15% of my time. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Cool. Uh, we got one more question just came in from Larry V in New York City. Um, and Larry's question is, does this also apply if your company's product is a service and not a tangible software or hardware product? Yeah, I would say this is uh, for anything and everything. So whether it's hardware, software, um, a service, uh, whatever the case may be, I think it's pretty much across the board. I mean, I don't have a whole lot of experience outside this outside the service and software industry. So, I, again, I'm just sharing my own experience. But, but I, but based on the information from other product managers I've spoken with and other industries I've seen this work in, I, I think this is pretty pretty much across the board. Excellent. Um, so I'll hand it back to you just uh, for everyone else who's watching us right now on the live stream. Um, definitely keep your questions coming in. Submit them in through Google Moderator and as they uh, as they come up, I will pass them along to Dominic to answer for you. Thanks. Back to you, Dominic. All right. Thanks, Jeremy. So uh, 
here's my screen again. So in terms of how to do it, um, it really kind of breaks down into a number of different uh, resources. I'm going to kind of skip quickly through some of these slides. Um, this is kind of an overview slide. Um, the first one, and the one that I probably spend a fair bit of time on, is uh, Google. I'm going to talk about uh, Google Alerts uh, very briefly. Uh, so this is an example of some of my own personal Google Alerts I get every day. Um, so basically, if you haven't used Google Alerts before, definitely it's a great tool to learn uh, to use in terms of gaining uh, not only competitive intelligence, so learning about what your competitors are doing uh, as far as press releases and things like that, uh, but Google does a great job of uh, kind of bringing the most pertinent stuff up to date um, to you every day from a industry trend perspective. So you can see here uh, behavioral analytics is something I'm very interested in with my job and so I get a daily update of everything that's going on in that particular uh, segment of the industry. Um, and uh, so it's a great tool, basically. Um, so that's one. The standard Google search. Um, so I'm not going to talk a whole lot about this, other than to say there's some tick, there are some tips and tricks around how to use Google search in a kind of creative way when you're doing competitive intelligence. So, for instance, your terms that you're using to search for information about your competitors, um, you can get pretty pretty creative. So, um, for instance, if you put in your competitor's name and you put in the word confidential, it's amazing how much information gets put out on the web that shouldn't be out on the web but is for a variety of different reasons. Uh, if you put in, uh, and I know documentation is sort of becoming a, an older thing and not uh, quite the trend anymore, but if you put in training guide and your competitor's name or your competitor's product name, um, you'll often find training guides uh, which have screenshots and have pictures and the whole nine yards and maybe even details about their product. Um, also, uh, you might use a term like feature comparison, so it's not un, unheard of that like a agency will do an R, put an RFP out for uh, a solution and they'll do some sort of matrix and for whatever reason they're putting that out onto the web. You might also look for like a term of price book. Uh, it's not unheard of that price books get uh, thrown out on the web for one reason or another. So those kinds of things I think are, are really helpful in, in terms of finding uh, more information. Um, Outside of Google, I would also look at tools like Addictomatic, which kind of do a scan of the whole uh, internet as well, um, and uh, and bring some really cool information about what your competitors and your industry is doing. The next one um, that um, I didn't really think a whole lot about before, and I use it a lot now, is uh, job data sites. Um, so Glassdoor is a great one. Uh, Glassdoor is really good because you have an evaluation by ex-employees of companies who are sharing information about their experience working for that company. And sometimes when things are not happy-go-lucky kind of leaving the company, they'll share information that maybe they don't typically share or you wouldn't typically see on the internet. Um, and so job sharing, uh, job data sites are really good for that. The other thing that's really good as far as job data sites uh, in terms of like Monster and, uh, and those kinds of sites is you can look at trends around what a company is doing as far as hiring. Uh, so you can look at, for instance, let's say one of my competitors is suddenly hiring a bunch of developers and they're using a particular technology it might give me insight into what the competitor is doing from a technology perspective or from a strategy perspective or even, you know, so I work for, uh, as I mentioned, uh, a lab, an innovation lab in New York City. We just opened that in um, January of this year. So one of our competitors could have very easily gone to some of these websites and seen that we were hiring somewhere between 50 to 75 people with a particular skill set and then said, oh, okay, they are probably building a new office and this is probably what they're looking to do in that office based on the skill set that they're, um, they're doing. Um, another great resource, of course, is LinkedIn. So there's lots of great employee profiles out there that share information about the details of what employees are doing within the doors of uh, their company. Uh, there's also company pages, there's user groups, and, and so forth and so on. So I definitely recommend job data sites as a, a great resource for competitive intelligence. Yeah, I think, uh, I think Christina's got some further question uh, along the lines that I think a little bit of what you're talking about already. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. Hi. Um, you might, I might have jumped the gun. You might answer this in a couple of slides, but um, this topic is super relevant to me. I'm just starting to do a competitive analysis for my own team. We've never done one before. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the questions I know that we're going to get asked is, how do we stack up against our competitors, or competitors in terms of traffic? Um, in terms of visits. So where do you have any recommendations for sources I can reference to get the web data for our competitors? In terms of competitor, uh, yeah, in terms of competitor web traffic, I actually yeah. don't, I, off the top of my head, I don't know where you would publicly find that kind of information. Mm -hmm. uh, I imagine there are resources out there. I just, quite honestly, I don't deal on the kind of the website access side of, of uh, a product set. I don't know if anybody else does. That's on the call, but where you look, you're looking for compet competitive intelligence. Uh, you said for web traffic. Web traffic. Compete.com. Compete.com. Yeah. Okay. That's a, that. a pretty good resource. Yeah, it's it's good even on the free part of it. Yeah, that'll help you. Cool. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> no problem. Back to you, Dominic. All right. Cool. So uh, another great resource is aggregation news feeds. Um, so this is not just the Google search kind of thing. What this is is a special tool, usually paid service of some sort, where you would uh, say, I want to look for this very specific market and this very specific type of competitor. Um, and what these tools will do is not only will they aggregate all the information that's across the web um, and across blogs and so forth and so on, but they will also do semantic and text analytic work. Um, so all of this searching, it takes time and you, know, you need to know exactly what you're looking for. Um, what these tools typically will do is they will aggregate all that information in real time and then they'll do uh, an analysis of the wording that you're looking for. Um, and really kind of hone in on the on the jewels that you're kind of trying to uncover. Um, so another great resource is uh, these outside vendors. Another great uh, thing that I do a lot of is around thought leadership. Um, so it's basically an individual or a firm that's recognized as an authority in a specialized field and whose expertise is sought after and rewarded. Um, so this is really kind of like going to conferences, having a Twitter feed, uh, having a blog, um, and really participating in the industry that, you, uh, that you're that you focused on. Um, because what it does essentially is it gets you into the room with not only end users who are going to be looking at your product or looking at your industry, whether it's analysts or whatever, but it also gets you in the room with your competitors. And very often uh, what will happen is you will overhear conversations, you will be in the room when conversations happen uh, between your competitor and uh, end consumers. Uh, and you learn a lot. Uh, you learn a lot about not only the trends of your industry, but you also learn a lot about the competitors directly. So I find that thought leadership activities of various sources will, will help in that. Um, so we just had another question come in. Yeah. Uh, this one is from Priya. Um, Priya asks, how do you find competitor information if there's not much online or Google? So if there's not much, so that's a great example actually, is going to these kinds of uh, these kinds of events where you would typically find your end users or find your industry uh, analysts or experts, uh, and then um, you know really kind of understanding from from those people from those conferences or those journals or outside resources uh, that are not on the internet. Uh, what it is that they're looking at and what kind of trends are, are happening and where they're buying their stuff as well. Um, so there's a lot of great, uh, a great value in that. Awesome. Um, and so, yeah, for everyone else who is still, uh, we got a lot of people in the live stream right now. Um, for uh, other people, if you've got questions, keep, keep them coming into the Google Moderator channel. And again, I'll keep passing them along to Dominic as they come in. And back to you. Yeah, so, uh, so another great uh, area to get uh, competitive intelligence is through investor events. So if your competitors are having investor events, which many are, um, keep up on the calendar of investor events for your top competitors. Um, and, uh, you know, these are, these are free, they're open, they're public, uh, they're usually recorded. Uh, if they're not recorded, usually there's some sort of formal report that comes out afterwards. Particularly analysts will keep an eye on those. 
Um, and um, they're, uh, they're a great way to find out what the strategy is of a company, how they're changing their strategy, what their success rate has been, what their sales numbers have been, uh, where they found sweet spots that maybe they weren't expecting. Um, lots of good information come out of these investor events. So I definitely highly recommend you basically just go to the website of your, com of your competitors. You, you can look in their press section or in their investor section and find out when their investor events are happening. And then as you see here, you can very easily register for these events. Again, being forthright about who you are, um, but, but usually you'll get some sort of little uh, nugget of information uh, by going to those events. And they, they usually happen quarterly. Um, so yeah, so they're not all that often. Uh, the next is around competitive strategy, so really understanding from press releases. And this is, you know, one of those things, it's kind of like a puzzle. Uh, you have information already about your competitor. You know, you know, how many employees they have. You know what the revenue is. You know, generally speaking, what their sales uh, projections are from all these different sources. Uh, but then by taking things like press releases, new product uh, 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 that are kicked off. Leadership changing um, is another kind of indicator as to maybe they're changing their strategy. So if they start hiring from a particular competitor or a particular company, maybe they're looking to do a certain thing uh, by making those changes. But basically you put all these pieces together and you start to fill in that puzzle and you start to really understand uh, what the company's strategy is and what it is they're looking to do and maybe new markets looking to go into or if they're starting to go global you'll start to see them open offices overseas and things like that so you know keeping up on on those that kind of information really helps you understand their strategy another uh, great tool uh, both inside and outside is around sales positioning kits so this is really a set of tools that helps uh, you and your company sell against the competitor by telling a story that helps the buyer decide uh, that your solution is the best one for its needs. So what are your this is really gets into the SWOT analysis. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? And then how do you compare it to your competitors? Uh, what are the differentiators between you and your competitors? This is a, a really good exercise. Uh, doing the SWOT analysis is a really good exercise in, uh, in terms of your competitive intelligence uh, plans. Um, one of the things that I'm very big on is sharing information. Um, a lot of people, particularly product managers, uh, think that I've got this information and it took me this amount of work to get this information about my competitor, so I'm going to hold it for myself. Don't do that, especially if you're in an organization where there are more than just you as a product owner. Um, definitely share that information across uh, the product management because, um, because It'll allow you to have an ongoing conversation with other people in your industry and particularly within your company um, to understand maybe there's implications to some of the things that you're uncovering that you really haven't thought of before. The more eyes on it uh, from within your organization that you can have, the better. Um, so one of the things that a lot of companies will do, particularly larger companies, is you might have a competitive intelligence portal, which is basically a single location for sales, product management, marketing folks, and so forth, to collect and post competitive data, uh, articles, press releases, and so forth. Um, sometimes you might have a staff that will manage this, and sometimes it's just you just put something together on Confluence or on SharePoint, and you let people kind of post what they learn. Um, so. It, and it's not just for product managers. Uh, it's you know for other folks as well to be able to post things that they're learning about uh, your competitors that maybe you wouldn't have come across for a variety of different reasons. So this is a really easy way to uh, to get folks within your company to share what they're learning about your competitors as well um, and kind of consolidate that in one place. So we have another question that just came in. Um, yeah. Ina in New York. Um, and uh, Tina, Tina asked, uh, the, Tina says, uh, I'm interested in more suggestions and finding out a company strategy, both private and public. Thanks, Tina. Um, so uh, she's looking to get at, get at more internal, more of the public and private strategies about uh, our competitors and other companies. Yeah, so some of the some of these tactics are really, uh, you know, from a public perspective, are kind of easy to come across. Um, getting the private stuff is a little bit harder. Again, you know, it really goes to as 
as much as possible, stay as uh, connected to the industry as you can. You know, another great uh, great thing um, that I've used is really staying close with business anal uh, with um, industry analysts. Uh, industry analysts will not only talk to you about what's going on for your company and how you're dealing with particular industry um, uh, trends, but they will tend to share what they're seeing outside of your company, and you might get little tidbits that you wouldn't have gotten otherwise. One of the things I've tried, for instance, is industry analysts will often visit other innovation labs, for instance, or other companies, and they will often uh, tweet about their experience. They won't necessarily tweet exactly what they saw or what products uh, your competitors are coming out with, but those analysts might share information uh, in a general way based on a conversation that they just had with one of your competitors earlier. Um, if you know that an analyst is going in and meeting, uh, let's say you're at a uh, conference of some sort, a, a trade conference or something like that, they might very well, um, if you know that they're meeting with uh, certain competitors uh, on a particular day, they might, again, they might share information through Twitter that is not directly stating, hey, this competitor is coming out with this new product, but they might start talking about it uh, because they want to, they also want to uh, express that they are kind of cutting edge and that they're staying ahead of the trends. Um, and so if one of your competitors is doing something kind of creative and innovative and interesting, um, they might share that. So keep keeping up on their uh, Twitter feeds is, is definitely another good good way to, to stay on top of things uh, and learn. Again, it's a puzzle. It's putting together all these pieces and really kind of as the best you, uh, that you can uh, trying to uncover what the picture looks like behind the walls of your competitors. Excellent. That was great. Um, and again, keep the questions coming in through Google Moderator, and I'll pass them on. Back right. to you. All right, cool. Another uh, another great resource is uh, industry research. Um, you know, there's a uh, uh, you know obviously Pricewater Cooper is Gardner, Forrester, IDC, and so forth. This is basically research that's conducted by industry sector professionals who deliver research and points of view on emerging emerging trends, regulatory changes, developing performance benchmarking, shared methodologies, and key business issues. Um, you'll often hear in the competitive intelligence world this thing called primary research and secondary research. This is really the primary research. So these are like these are the big firms who spend a lot of resources on digging deep and really coming out with you know your magic quadrants, um, which is basically uh, you know this this graph that shows you here are all the leaders in this particular industry and here's how they kind of compare to one another and they do these things year after year so you can see how uh, your competitors are moving in terms of the magic quadrant. Um, one of you know one of the downsides for this is if you're in a smaller company and you don't have a whole lot of resources and money to spend on competitive intelligence this might not be an option if you're in a larger company uh, you're probably doing this already to some extent um, it's just a matter of getting a hold of that data and also participating in the research that they're doing so oftentimes uh, your company might be if you're in in terms of if you're one of the leaders in a particular industry uh, these research firms might reach out or might ask you to participate in research uh, so that they can uncover uh, how you kind of fit within the, uh, the market. So another great resource. I talked a little bit about social media already. Uh, I've got, got one more question, another question from Priya. Yep. Uh, and Priya asked, uh, can, a competitor block, uh, can a competitor block you from their site if you're browsing their site for competitive analysis purposes? Yes, absolutely. So this is, uh, you know, it. So first of all, it's very, it's very legitimate for them to do this. Um, and uh, some of the more sensitive uh, competitors might very well do this. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, there are some industries like the one that I work in. I, I've probably been blocked once from one of my competitors um, by putting in my email address. I've never been blocked from an IP range, for instance. Um, I have seen it where that's happened, where they're like, oop, the IP range for this company is this, and so we're not letting them uh, take a look at any of our white papers or demos or whatever. So it does happen. Um, 
the only way to find out is to try, right? And, uh, you know, there was a period of time early in my uh, product management career where I was kind of, like, nervous about it, and I was like, I felt like I was being sneaky or I was being bad by going, and it, it can't hurt. Just go, put your, as long as you're being forthright about who you are and represent yourself honestly, there's nothing wrong with trying to uh, trying to get a demo of what your competitors are doing. So, uh, but yes, they have every right, and they certainly do and will block you uh, in some cases. So, very cool. Okay, so the questions we got right now, and to you. All right. So yeah, so um, so social media is a great great way to uh, to learn uh, about your competitors. Uh, I mentioned about analysts, um, so that's one way. Uh, Certainly, following your com your competitors directly, watching their their feeds. I use TweetDeck, for instance. There's lots of uh, Twitter feed uh, tools out there that you can put in search terms, and you can basically say, "Tell me every time somebody tweets this specific phrase or this specific industry uh, terminology or whatever the case may be." It's also a great resource, by the way, for uh, for customer complaints about companies. Um, so you might be doing this for your own company, but you're not looking at it for your competitors directly. Um, but oftentimes, and this is becoming a, uh, this is becoming very common, where somebody has a bad experience with one of your competitors, and they start blasting that competitor on Twitter or LinkedIn or whatever the case may be. Um, you might learn something. I mean, who knows? Um, it may not be useful. It, you may not be able to generalize based on one user's experience. But if you start seeing a trend, um, yeah, it's helpful information. Again, it's it's filling in the puzzle. Um, so yeah, so social media definitely. The next uh, area is around uh, what I call business war games. This is basically where you get a group of people together in your company, particularly strategists. Um, who might see a particular threat that's occurring with one of, your, one of your competitors. They start moving into a certain segment, and they're starting to kick your you-know-what uh, with regards to um, uh, taking a, a piece of your business that you didn't expect them to. And it's really a, like a workshop of sorts. I've seen these happen in one- or two-day workshops where everybody gets together. Um, usually they bring in somebody who's an expert on that particular competitor, um, and they and basically start coming up with how you would compete against that company in a creative way. Um, but it allows decision makers to consider proactively how different players can react to the change and to each other. Um, I seen this be very effective, uh, particularly in short-term kinds of scenarios where a competitor is suddenly doing something very new and you're like, oh, we didn't expect this to happen. Um, it allows everybody to kind of get in a room and uh, and start strategizing and, and working together. I talked uh, earlier about win loss analysis. I'm not going to go into great detail about this, but I will tell you that it's it's certainly uh, understanding why you're losing and why you're winning uh, is definitely helpful. It tells you a lot about your competitors. It tells you a lot about their sales force as well if they're direct selling. Um, uh, but also could tell you a lot about your website and how you're, uh, how you're getting your product out there, how you're marketing your product, and how that's being received. Um, but also how you're being perceived just in general as a company um, and understanding how people are, uh, what they're thinking about you. So, you know, ADP, for instance, everybody knows that we're a big payroll company. What they may not know is that, you know, we go into a number of different other areas like benefits, 401k, um, and so forth and so on. Um, and so really understanding where you're winning and where your, loss, where your losses are helps you uh, see how others are seeing you as well. Um, and then finally, before we move on to how to use this data, um, it... I share this already, but it's important that you share what you find. Um, so it's not like, oh, I suddenly found this gold nugget and I can't tell anybody about it. Uh, it's tempting to keep that information to yourself and to feel like it's some secret. Um, but using that within uh, your company and sharing it with others within your company brings the greatest value to the effort you put into your uh, finding it in the first place because it gives you a uh, new perspective. It gives you the ability to, because it's not just your puzzle you're trying to put together. It's the whole company trying to put this puzzle together. Why not use everybody's brain on that? So again, I, I'm a big proponent of sharing what you find with others um, to try to put that puzzle together. 
So now let's move into how to use the data. Um, so what's a true competitor? Uh, so uh, while every product who sits in your domain and related adjacencies may seem like a threat, the truth is that not every company that is in those areas is truly a real threat. So what do I mean by that? So I'm going to try to use, um, so first of all, there's a billion models out there of how you look at your competitors and how you put them into some sort of model. Uh, I'm going to show you one model that I've recently been using a lot. Um, this is not the only model for competitive intelligence, and I'm actually kind of doing something a little different with the model to kind of make it unique. Um, so I'm using the cat um, scenario here. Um, but the left-hand side, low to high, is the G2, uh, GTM is their go-to-market capability. So a company that's really low uh, go-to-market capability is obviously going to have a harder time getting product out and getting it out quickly. Again, we heard uh, a couple of months ago about how it's important to be uh, agile and lean and so forth so we can get product out the door. But it's not just about getting product developed and getting the actual product created. It's also the ability for the company and for the organization to get it uh, sold, to get it implemented, to get it in the hands of end users. Uh, so that capability is something that can be measured very, uh, very easily. And then there's the disruption factor. Uh, so from a low to high again, how disruptive and how um, sort of innovative is the company uh, with getting their product out the door? Um, and this is where uh, uh, where you sort of have the, you know, maybe the cutting edge companies that are coming in uh, that maybe are really able to do some really creative things because they don't have the overhead of existing products that they have to kind of like update and migrate their existing base into and so forth and so on. Um, so yeah, so those are the two kind of areas that, uh, that I kind of look at. So as far as uh, how to use the data, it's really kind of plotting this information about your competitors into this matrix and then putting yourself into it in terms of your capability and then doing a comparison. So I'll just give you some examples. So the lower left-hand side, you see the kitty there. They're the ones who have, uh, in my view, a traditional offering. Uh, they're often copycatters. Their product is focused on marketing, and it's all about uh, outpricing their competition. So they're kind of, you know, they take a long time to get stuff out the door, uh, but they're using, uh, oftentimes they're using pricing as their competitive uh, ad advantage. Then you have the Tiger, the top left-hand side. They have the strong market visibility, customer-centric, great sales force, but they're not very innovative. They're not really getting new stuff out the door. Often they have the overhead of old technology or old product, uh, and adjusting is very difficult for them. At the top right, you have your Lion, who is very innovative. They've got a recognizable brand. Uh, they often have very, uh, they have a large early adopter kind of uh, uh, clientele, uh, and they have this significant ability to invest heavily. So usually these, these are the startups kind of, kind of scenario. Uh, they're the ones uh, to definitely keep an eye on, but, but again, you can, you can definitely compete against these guys. It's just your strategy against them is going to be a little bit different. And then finally, your Cheetah. They take risks with new innovations. They're consistently putting in new improvements. They're less recognized, so that's the thing that's hurting them. But they're effective with good communication. So let's say you're on the bottom right-hand side. Um, so here's some of the strategies that if I'm a cheetah, here's some of the strategies that I might use against each of these categories. So starting with the kitty. Uh, as a product manager, uh, you'll want to invest in the product differentiation and innovation. So it's really about differentiating yourself from an innovation perspective because you're being really innovative. Um, and your go-to-market is not the greatest, but neither is theirs. So they're pretty easy to target and to kind of keep at bay. Um, against the Cheetah, as a product manager, you'll want to review the roadmap for short-term adaptations of existing offerings. So you really want to kind of say, hey, they're really good at getting stuff out the door, but they're not being really innovative. Look at us. We're, we're creating new stuff, um, and we're getting it out the door, and we're, um, we're doing a really nice job at, um, 
at kind of thinking about new trends and, and keeping up on that. And then finally, against the lion, as a product manager, you, you're, you want to look to design a roadmap review process with the business partners to show that you have leapfrog capability. You're really able to move ahead of them. Um, yes, they are also disruptive. They are being innovative. But here's your roadmap uh, and how you're planning to jump ahead of them and how you're kind of thinking ahead of them. And then if you are also against another cheetah, as a product manager, you'll want to review the roadmap for short-term adaptations of existing offerings. This is where you want to probably keep a really close eye on what is the cheetah doing, not just in the quarter, but on a monthly basis and perhaps even a semi-monthly basis, um, so that you're understanding what kind of moves they're making and really getting out there what moves you're making and getting this out in front of the sales force, in front of your prospects, and so forth. So that's a little bit about how to use the data and how to kind of put it in the context of uh, these kind of buckets of your competitors. And then finally, uh, other resource tips uh, for uh, competitive intelligence. A couple of resources that I've used. Uh, one is this, uh, this guy named Larry Kahana, who is a journalist and a writer. He has this uh, uh, YouTube video out there called Competitive Intelligence in Short. Really highly recommend it. I talked earlier about Google. Um, lots of creative stuff around Google tricks that are out there. I would recommend an article that was out on uh, Lifehacker called The Top 10 Clever Google Search Tricks. Um, it, it really helps you use Google to your advantage. So Google is not just searching the internet at large, but they're also searching deeper level into the particular websites of your competitors' web. Uh, websites. So there are some uh, little shorthand tricks that you can use if you want to just specifically do a Google search on your competitor's website and you want to kind of dig deeper in terms of uh, data that they might, ha might have out there that's specific uh, with competitive intelligence. So that is uh, my presentation. So we got a question in uh, from, uh, from Priya. Um, and uh, Priya Chris's uh, latest question is, how do you get your company to move out from being a kitty to being a tiger? So moving from being, <laughs> from being a kitty to being a tiger, you know, I would say it depends on the situation. It depends on how big you are. It depends on the technology that you're using or what it is, what kind of product you are. So I'm in the software and service industry. Um, and I would say for a larger company that has a kind of a product set that doesn't move very fast. Um, it's really about um, perhaps segmenting off a particular group of the organization that is focused strictly on innovation and is focused strictly on being disruptive and not letting them uh, be sort of, I guess, highly influenced by sort of the drag of the company. Um, I think that's one of the keys, is really allowing a certain segment of the company to focus on those innovations. And then as far as getting the go-to-market to happen uh, more quickly, it's really about process improvement. I highly recommend uh, using folks like uh, business process improvement uh, staff who really understand how to take what may be a very complicated process in terms of getting the product out the door uh, to be streamlined and to allow you to, uh, to use Agile, not just in the product development process, but also in the release process itself. That's great. Um, so that's all the questions we have right now. Um, and so for those of you joining us, um, new and old, um, as always, the presentation uh, that uh, Dominic uh, just walked you through uh, will be posted to our SlideShare channel, and I'll be posting that up for everyone to be able to access. Um, and again, thank you to our speaker, Dominic Gaudry, um, Director of Product Management at ADP for today's discussion on active competitive intelligence. And a big thank you from me, from Jeremy Horn, the product guy, to everyone who joined us today from the live stream, from the product group, and elsewhere. And also, don't forget, if you want to be a product mentor just like Dominic and many other mentors that have come come before him and will, will come after him as well, uh, definitely go to the productmentor.com and sign up today. Uh, we're always looking for more great product 
mentors there. Um, and also, if you are looking for a product person or you're looking for that great next product job, we have a uh, job board uh, free for everyone at theproductjobs.com. Uh, so go check it out. It's all product, product, product jobs. Um, and again, thank you, everyone. Bye.